Many youngsters across uh, or access to a world far more fast-paced and eventful than the one they're used to, it seems. But while they may be taking part in physical activities in the virtual world, in reality, of course, they're still playing uh, a console, sitting down very often. Well, it's this lack of movement that led to one young man actually losing his life, as Lucy Cotter now reports. Video games are action-packed and adrenaline fueled. However, their players couldn't be more different. Excessive gaming's long been seen as unhealthy, but now it's been shown to be deadly. 20-year-old Chris Staniforth died of deep vein thrombosis, a condition often linked to long-haul flights. His father believes Chris developed a fatal blood clot after spending up to 12 hours at a time on his console. It was me like researching into what could happen to a healthy young man, um, which, you know, hadn't been flying long haul. It just didn't make any sense. When the main causes come out in the traveller's thrombosis were immobility by, in, you know, a confined space for a long time, and then dehydration uh, is a factor, um, it kind of just fitted. The very nature of video games means players can sit for hours staring at the screen and moving very little. John Patrick admits to playing too much and believes he's not alone in his obsession. I definitely think I'm addicted. We've seen all sorts of people who are addicted to gaming. We see people that sort of in their 30s to 40s, and I mean, they're doing the same thing as me. They're wasting their time on a, an internet game instead of enjoying what's really out there in the world. The Broadway Lodge is the country's first rehab clinic to take gaming addicts and has given advice to children as well as adults. It's very similar to uh, quite a lot of the other addictions in that um, social exclusion, there's a breakdown within the families, uh, there are some health issues, they don't tend to eat properly, they don't tend to look after themselves from a personal hygiene issue uh, and they isolate as well. Recent statistics show more than half of 16 to 24 year olds play consoles regularly. The industry's representatives, UKIE, deny addiction is a problem, although they do want to educate gamers to play responsibly. Maybe every 45 to 60 minutes, take five minutes out, move away from the screen, you know, walk around, do something else, but don't just, you know, sit there hour upon hour because in any, in any sort of hobby or any walk of life, even in your, in your job, Doing that is, is not good. Interactive games are the fastest growing sector in the entertainment industry, but as their popularity increases, it's feared so will the associated health problems. Lucy Cotter, Sky News. Well, joining us in the studio now, Dr. Noel uh, Campbell, consultant psychiatrist at Roehampton's Priory Hospital. Good morning. Thanks good morning. for coming in. Why is it so addictive? Well, it is a significant problem with all ages and in addictions we're thinking about consequences, the consequences of whatever the activity is and we're, we've, your piece there talked about psychological and physical consequences. The psychological consequences, the social isolation and I noticed when my 16 year old was playing this for too long, gets irritable, yeah, gets bad tempered. Yeah. Um, they're sitting around, I mean the ultimate consequence, this young man who sadly lost his life because he was sitting there for so long. Um, uh, the, the games are designed to be addictive. Right. So You're designed to do levels and get more and more. It's a bit of a man thing, you know. You're going to well, I was going to ask you, it does effect. seem to be these young, young males yeah. that, that are the ones that are at risk. Uh, women seem to get interested in things like clothes and fashion and buying shoes. And stuff. However, <laughs> however, you have admitted that yeah. you, you are a gamer. Because I've got two older brothers, so they were sort of right. very much into computer games, so I got drawn into it. And I wondered from um, the point of view of, of encouraging quicker, faster reactions and things like that, whether, whether games can help from some points of view. Uh, I'm not sure there's much evidence to say they're much good for that. I no. think the negative side for those that have an addictive potential is huge. I mean, the, the, the business of it even not eating properly. Mm. I mean, some people will order a takeaway and eat it in front of them and be interacting with the would they have the, an the obsessional game. nature anyway? Is there a weakness in, there in will, their There will makeup? be an addictive personality behind this that will, that will want to get stuck into one particular thing and will just do it more and more and more. So there are no positives, you, you don't think, from playing games? I mean, should parents be saying to their children in that case, look, you know, they're not good for you, don't play them at all? The problem with any addiction is, can you do it in a controlled way? Can you do controlled drinking? Can you do controlled gambling? Can you do controlled gaming? 
for, for certain individuals that may be very, very difficult. And does and that, does, does that go as far as social networking as well? I mean, we talk about tweets and, and, and uh, Facebook and the rest of it. There seems to be a, you know, a generation where the technology is, is actually controlling their lives. Well, this is the generation, sorry to talk about the lost generation of the kids, <laughs> but they're out together and they're all doing this. Yeah. They're, not, they're not talking to each other. They're sending messages to other people and they're not really interacting. And, and how important, you know, we hear from a lot of parents, they don't go out and play any longer, they don't go out on their bikes, they don't no. do the old... So, how important is that physical activity in, in your so mental development? The, the consequences to your physical health are huge. They're sitting around, not doing very much. So it's OK if they're under control of the parents, because the parents can say, um, as the gaming industry guy says, look, limit the amount of time, also check the content. It can't be good for people under 18 to be playing games where you have intimate liaisons with sex industry workers in the back of a car and then kill them afterwards, as in GTA. It can't be healthy, Blimey. so you've got to be right. watching out what so, they're doing. So how, how do you actually treat people then when they're brought to you, particularly the younger people? What The, 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 the essence of any treatment for addiction is them realising they've got a problem them realising I've got an addiction, I'm powerless over this and I want to do something about it. They've got to realise right. that and put their hands up and say, I want to change. Same as ever. Cure yourself first and then... Indeed. Yeah. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. Illuminating. Don't forget your views on that, particularly if you're a parent. News at sky.com. Dare we ask them to tweet as well? It might be a bit addictive. But at <laughs> I'll, Sky I'll be on Shop. Twitter, yeah. yeah, indeed. <laughs> and 8451. Thank you very much indeed Thank for you. coming in.